Okay, Nikki's watching Queer Eye downstairs, so hopefully you're not hearing that on my audio recording. I'm gonna say up front that this one is a little bit of a cheat of the 25 minute tutorial. This painting actually took like 35 to 40 minutes, but I wanna keep that 25 minute tutorial vibe. So I did speed it up a little bit. So if you're following along with it, and you're getting lost, make sure you pause it, take a moment, get your painting to where you want it to be, and then press play. You don't need to be doing it as fast as I'm doing it in this video because I'm not even doing it as fast as I'm doing it in this video. So this is another acrylic painting. This time it's water. This is another one where I'm not using an exact reference photo. I kind of, for this one I do have a collection of water photos up on my iPad so I can look at them while I'm painting this, but I'm not directly trying to copy one. This is more of like a loose kind of interpretation of water. I'm going with, um, right now I'm painting on areas where I want my darkest parts to be, those shadowed areas of the water, the kind where it's the part where the light not hitting, obviously, that's what shadows are. I'm just, I'm just kind of drawing in where that's gonna be. You can see that I'm not using a very thick layer of paint. It's very thin. I've got a lot of water in there. Oh, just got dipped my hand right in that black paint, as per usual. Nice and gone, okay. Here we go. <laughs> Going back in. It is a very thin layer. So now it looks like I'm mixing up a lighter blue. Doing. I'm grabbing an even different blue. So this blue that I'm putting on right now is a cyan. Put more on there. That's too little. Put more. Dummy. The paint color I just put on there is a cyan blue. The other blue I have on this palette is an ultramarine blue. I tend to, when I'm painting, I don't really mind not using specific colors so much, like I'm like fine with using uh, just a generic yellow, a generic red, but um, I tend to use two different blues. One is an ultramarine blue for the, the deeper blues, and the cyan, or um, sometimes I use a cerulean blue, is for those lighter blue colors. So as far as like the paints to have on, generic primary colors are good, but if, when you're doing water, I tend to like two different blues, an ultramarine blue and a cyan or a cerulean, something that's a little bit lighter. Because the ultramarine blue can be very dark and when you add white to it, it's a little grayer than say adding white to a cerulean or a uh, cyan blue. So what I just did is I added little highlights, just like covering the, co I'm covering the little, whatever that is, what is that? A little piece of wood. I'm covering that little piece of MDF board I have with a very thin layer of paint just so I can see where I want my highlights and my shadows to be. Very, very simple cursory layer. You can see it's super choppy. It doesn't need to be beautiful. It's going to be completely covered up by other paints, but this gives me an idea of where things go. I always like to have some kind of sketchy version on a painting before I, before I go straight in. So now I'm going with some darker colors to exaggerate those shadows. And those shadows on this water are going to be really dark. I've got a little bit of a glare from the lights that I'm using, but it's a pretty dark, a pretty dark blue, almost a little bit of green. I think I, watch me, I put blue in there, a little bit of black, and then a hint of yellow to try and make it like, oh, you need a little tiny smidge of red to make it a very, very deep color. with a little bit of a green tint. One of the only times that I ever use the color black is when I'm painting water. Some of those deep shadows are so dark that you need just like something that pulls it super deep. I don't have super, super nice acrylics either. If you have nicer acrylics, maybe the pigments from that ultramarine can make it dark enough, but it, this is one of the circumstances where I grab a little bit of black to make it the color I want it to be. Enough. I did a little bit of a mid-tone, a little bit of a mid-tone color. 
I'm hoping it's saturated more. I tried that one color and it didn't quite look the way I wanted it to, so now I'm going in with a little more saturated of a color, yeah. Adding it into the places that maybe aren't the darkest, but are definitely dark still, but fading into a little bit of a lighter color. Drawing in some of these littler details slowly. Putting this slightly lighter color on the edges of where my darkest color is. That way I'm hoping to get a blend effects with acrylics. The thing I don't love about acrylics is that they dry so fast. It's a love-hate relationship because for videos like this where I want to put a lot of layers on fast to show um, a very quick tutorial, it's nice because the layers dry and I can go straight on to the next color on top of that. But it gets hard to blend and when I'm painting water and when I'm painting clouds and things like that there's a lot of very smooth color transitions they're it's very very blended and acrylics are much harder for me to blend I guess there are ways to blend acrylics better I'm unfamiliar with it I've never been successful with it so what I'm attempting here is having a transitional color between the darker to lighter colors, making the appearance of a, a blend, but it's actually just a layer of paint that's moving from dark to light, if that makes sense. Now one of these days maybe I'll figure out a, um, a good solution for a medium drying time on acrylics, but for right now, oils are all my favorite. For the purposes of these videos, acrylics are nice. Maybe I'll try and do a 25 minute oil painting. I think that'll be more difficult, but it's worth a shot. Still adding a little more of those details in that mid color. Oh, Vinny's crying at the door. I'm gonna go get her. Come here, baby. with me. Come watch me paint and talk about the painting. Here we go. Okay, Bindi's here with us now. She's sitting in my lap. Ooh, here I'm, it looks like I've mixed up a dark, dark, dark color. I think I'm trying to emphasize the shadows even more. Yeah, I have a little tiny brush. Oh, some deep colors. Stop licking your lips. Stop licking me. You can hear it on the audio. This is where I'm getting into more of the detailed parts. Notice that in the furthest, the part of the, the painting that is would be closest to us, say if we were taking this as a photo, the waves are a little bit thicker and then they shrink as they go back. That's because of our perspective, so we're seeing those ones that are bigger closer and as they move back more they get smaller. So the lines that I'm creating to have that wave effect are getting thinner as they go back. So right now, because I'm working from the back of the painting to the front, I'm doing thinner lines of this dark shadow color and then slowly thickening them as they're going up.
So going in with that deep, deep shadow color, really emphasizing the contrast. That's one of the big things about painting water is the water is all contrast. It's the only way you can tell the undulation of the water is from the highlights and the shadows that we're using paint to show the contrast of. Well, this is not a good recording setup, I'm realizing. The lights I'm having are kind of creating a glare on the darkest parts of the painting, and my big fat head is just right there in front of the whole thing. She dang it. It's okay, this is a learning experience. These videos are for me. I'm learning how to record. I'm still teaching myself how to paint, figuring this out, and being nice. And I'm learning from the mistakes I'm making when I'm making these. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And I got shadows everywhere from moving around. It'll definitely be a different setup in the future. But this is, I'm learning. I'm learning, I'm being nice to myself about it. My heat keeps coming on while I'm recording audio. That cannot happen because you can hear it. No, no, no. Go down. I'll freeze to death so that I don't have to have audio pollution. There we go. Settle in in a nice 65 degrees inside. That's definitely manageable for trying to keep my audio okay. Oh, also I'm recording with um, a pop filter this time. I still have this mic that's not great. I definitely think I'm going to invest in a nicer one in the future, but for right now, it's working fine. Now I'm going for another mid-color, trying again to create that blend with acrylics that in between between the, the darkest and the lightest colors those highlights and those shadows So see that from where I originally put all the shadows where I decided that I wanted to be darker areas some of those shadowed areas are darker than others some of them are almost black and some of them are a, a lighter kind of blue green I just marked them all as places where their shadows because they were much darker than the lighter highlight areas but they're not all necessarily one exact color Shadows come in different colors, especially when it's water and there's reflection involved. I'm having trouble deciding where to put your shadows and your highlights. It might help to like imagine like a wavy piece of fabric and then a light source on that wavy piece of fabric. So say um, like this, you have a wavy piece of fabric and then you have a spotlight coming from behind where your view of the fabric is. There'll be highlights on what you'll perceive as the back of the fabric little fabric mountains and then shadows on the front of your perception of the fabric mountains and so you can kind of and in the middle the little the tops of those mountains are going to be an in-between color because it's moving from light to shadow this probably makes zero sense and it's probably a wholly unhelpful analogy but having an idea of where your light source is and sticking to it really 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 helps with the realism of your painting if realism is what you're going for so like in this painting kind of like i said the highlight the sun is coming from behind the water from our view of the water and we're looking at the shadowed part forward going in with an even 
even lighter mid-color, filling in some of those areas where I was deciding there would be a highlight. This is definitely moving from a mid-color to a highlight now. Filling in all those spaces where we had originally just had um, that little underpainting, very transparent layer. At this point, now you're kind of seeing that it's looking like water as opposed to a, a bunch of weird wavy lines on a, on a little piece of wood. Though it depends on your perception. Sometimes I look at paintings and I'm like, this just looks like weird squiggly lines on a piece of wood. And then I'll bring someone else in and ask them their opinion and they'll be like, wow, that water looks so realistic. Where to me, all I see is squiggly lines because I... It was with the painting every step of the way, so saw it from when it was only squiggly lines to where it is then. You can sometimes spend so much time with your painting that you don't actually know if it's good anymore. You, you kind of like lose grasp on what is good looking and what is not. Well, now I'm adding um, a mid-tone darker going over some of those highlighted areas I did before with this, like, deeper blue, but it's still light enough to be a mid-tone between those shadows. What am I doing? Oh, I was grabbing a new brush getting a little bit of a smaller brush and cleaning up my palette for a minute. It's nice to get a fresh start on your palette and remove some of that excess stuff every once in a while. Unless you have like a massive palette, then don't worry about it. But I like to keep things a little bit neat when I'm working with my paints. Also with working with acrylic paints, it's different than oils is that you have to mix things as you go. When I oil paint, I tend to mix everything outright and then tweak them as I go along. But this you kind of have to like mix and then use the paint up and then mix again because if you don't it'll dry out looks like i'm mixing a highlight 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 a very very light color i'm taking my thin little brush and get your big fat head out of that stop it get your head out of the way there you go a girl apologize for my hairs that are blocking the view of what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see enough. Now I'm just lining in those extra highlight areas, making sure that every little bit of that transparent under layer we had originally is covered up with paint. Because now we don't want it. One of the ways to make your painting look fully finished is to not leave any background space. Sometimes like people put like a um, like a burnt umber kind of underlayer and purposefully leave places open to show the burnt umber and just use it as like a light a lighting trick. But um, if you have white parts showing on your painting, like if you used a white canvas or board or something like that and you have little white pieces still left in your painting, go back and fill those in. Don't leave white spaces left on your painting. It will make your painting feel unfinished and you'll like it much better once it's fully covered up. Unless it's like purposeful, but if you're trying to make a like a landscape painting or a, something like that, don't let yourself get lazy and leave spaces unpainted. Unless you feel like that's what you want for your piece. Also, you don't have to listen to anything I say. I'm just a voice on the internet. Do whatever the hell you want. Don't worry about it. Still lining in those little highlights with that light blue. Ooh, I didn't like that and I just rubbed it out. <laughs> I think it was just a little bit too light. And sometimes that happens where I'll just go like, eat, push it out with my thumb. Ooh, and this is the lightest, lightest highlight. So these are areas where the sun is hitting the most. It's almost white. I think it still has a little bit of, I think it still has a little bit of like blue, 
gray in it, but it's definitely very bright. Adding in these last highlight bits are when, for me, paintings really start to come to life. It's always the most satisfying to get close to the end of a painting and start adding in the tiniest details. It feels so good. You don't have to go through the stress of being midway through a painting and looking like a kindergartner did it and you being like, will this ever be where I want it to be? None of that. The last little details of a painting are very relaxing for me. Oh, a little close up of those hairs. Aren't they beautiful? No split ends for me. Move your head, Jesus Louise, girl. There we go. When you see me looking like I'm mixing up the paint a lot, I'm actually adding a little bit of water to my acrylics so that they flow better. Sometimes when they come straight out of the tube, they're really chunky and they don't flow as well, and especially when you're doing water, flow is important. I want everything to brush onto the whatever surface I'm using smoothly. So I'll often add a little bit of water, even if it makes it a little more transparent, that smoothness is important to me. fingers. Now she's coming in the door. I'm recording, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye. <laughs> I'm just going with a little bit of a mid color, I'm trying to smooth out the areas between the super highlight and that mid tone, just to try to see if I can get them to blend just a little bit more. This is an attempt. Also, this painting is about being quick and uh, just practicing your skill. This is not a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. You shouldn't expect yourself to be making a masterpiece. This is a fun little exercise. Just give it a shot. I often use acrylics just for an exercise piece to practice color or contrast or something. Ooh. So you'll see this in water where like, there'll be tiny, tiny little bits that'll look super dark within a highlight. It looks like, if you look at detailed pictures of water, there are some areas that just get super dark in the middle of a highlight, like there's an indent in it and the light can't get to it. It's super interesting. I find adding those to make my painting just a little bit more realistic. I just added two of those there. Kind of hard to explain. I don't really know how water physics works. Almost done. Almost there. Still doing a little bit of blending. These little videos are really fun to do. I really enjoy these 25 minute videos of paintings and talking about the painting afterward. Ooh. Now that's my favorite part, I'm adding tiny little shinies on the water, little sparkles from where the light reflects. It just makes me happy. I like doing it. Um, I want to do more of these 25 minute videos. Maybe next time I'll actually do it in 25 minutes as opposed to 35 minutes and sped up. Um, I'm on Instagram if you want to follow me. I'm also on Facebook. I have a bunch of other tutorial videos about 
painting up and I'm adding more all the time. I'm getting much more serious about this channel and having tutorials and stuff. Do look how pretty those little sparkles are. I love that. It's my favorite. I kind of center them it's because that's where the sun would be. And then for the final touch, I'm adding like a little bit of a gold color just to emphasize that there's a little bit of sunlight like reflecting in these tiny little sparkles. Just like boop 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 on the edges. Well, you could see if my hand wasn't in the way. Ah, jeez Louise, I need to figure out my recording setup. You can't even see. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching. I have more videos available if you want to watch. And that's the end of our little painting. Other than I guess I'm going with a couple little more something or another. <laughs> uh, I'll be doing more painting videos in the future, and I will see you around. <laughs>